Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. In this episode, there are four new great stories waiting for us, and the first of them, do I look like I should work here? Found this subreddit a while back, loved reading through the best of these, and decided to throw my hat in the ring. Little bit of subtext. About two years ago, I was at a lovely pet place. You could almost call it a pet company with my dad getting cat litter. I was 15 and looked like it too. Denim vest with cut off sleeves, pens all over, beanie, music blasting in my ears, enough to make a can I speak to the manager lady deaf. The wall of various cat litters stood right next to these two big doors. My dad asked me to pull down a 20 pound bag from the wall while he looked at some other cat litter. As he walked away, the two big doors open and a short manager type lady walks out with a clipboard. From here on, we'll refer to her as PCM and me as CB. PCM taps me on the shoulder. Ahem. I look over while finishing pulling down the bag. Can I help you? PCM motions to take off my earbuds. I oblige and take them out. You know the rules. Rules? Did I do something wrong? Your earbuds, the music. Uh, I didn't know the store had a policy on music. Is it too loud or something? I don't know what you're trying to do, but when on the floor, there's supposed to be no cell phones. And what are you even wearing? You know, you're supposed to be wearing something appropriate. I'm going to have to send you home early. At this point, I realized she thought I was an employee. Then I realized, man, do I really look that old? The years are not kind to me. I say, listen, I don't think you know what you're talking about. I'm just trying to get some kitty litter. Really, at the time, I was choosing my words very poorly. After hearing this, she was not happy. How dare you? You do not talk to a superior like that. You're just a volunteer and clearly not a good one at that. Now, really, this just set me off as much as it did her. First, I don't take that crap from anyone anymore. Second, what is she going to do? She started verbally assaulting a customer and a minor. You're right. I'm a really bad volunteer. So bad that I'm not even a volunteer. I'm a customer. Seriously, at this moment, if it wasn't for the context, I would be on Tales from Retail. Also, my dad showed up right in the middle of this rant. My dad says, hey, son, want to explain this? Because it looks like you're yelling at the manager of this store for no reason. PCM, sir, I'm so sorry. I thought your son was one of our volunteer high school students. They always break the rules and never get punished. Please, let me take 50% off your total today. And sir, addressing me at this point, I'm very sorry that I was disrespectful to you. Please don't take it personally. Really, since the moment she apologized, I was completely level-headed again. I get it. No hard feelings. Kids can be kind of crappy. Take it from me. I am one. In the end, we had a good laugh, and I had a good story to tell, and my dad bought $60 worth of cat litter for 30 bucks. Well, on the plus side, you got a discount. Sounds like a win. And our second story. So last time we left Mr. Clueless, he got a clue and had figured out the store he needed to go to was the competitor store, six blocks down the road, which is open 24 hours. I picked up my girlfriend tonight, said hello to Paul, George, and Ringo. John wasn't providing a ride this evening. Apparently Paul is one of you people. He mentioned the posts. Hi, Paul. Afterwards, the girlfriend suggests we stop at competitor store for some special supplies. You know, condoms? I think I broke the speed limit driving to the store. Not the posted speed limit, I mean the speed of light. So we're traveling around the store at breakneck speed looking for things and actually getting kind of worked up when we run into a familiar face. It's Mr. Clueless as I live and breathe. Mr. Clueless, you, me. Hey honey, this is the guy who wouldn't leave us alone in the parking lot last week. You know the guy who kept you from leaving for a half hour every night? Girlfriend. Is that right? Mr. Clueless, you stay right there. And he leaves, moving quickly. The girlfriend and I look at each other, shrug, and head off to find some chocolate whipped cream. Two minutes later, as the girlfriend and I are debating the qualities of sugar-free chocolate whipped cream versus regular chocolate whipped cream, here comes Mr. Clueless with a guy in tow. He'll be known as manager because that's who he was. Mr. Clueless, This is the guy. I spoke to corporate about him. Rude and unhelpful. He needs to be fired. Corporate told me to tell you to fire him. I crap you not. That's exactly what he said. Manager. Sir, he doesn't work here. 
I can't fire him. Mr. Clueless. Liar! He and his friends wouldn't let me into the store. You need to fire them all. The manager looked completely dumbfounded at this, but this is when my girlfriend took matters into her own hand. She whipped that hand around and smacked Mr. Clueless with a resounding slap that I'm sure they heard all the way across the store. She says, get out of here, a-hole. Mr. Clueless, you hit me. Turning to the manager, call the police. She hit me. Me, I didn't see anything. Manager, I must have been looking the wrong way. I didn't see her do anything. I have never seen a human being go from rage to WTF quicker. Mr. Clueless, I'm never shopping here again. I just couldn't help it. Sure you will. There isn't anywhere else that sells your cat food at 11 o'clock at night. Mr. Clueless whipped out his phone and raised it up, and I immediately flipped him the bird in front of my face. The manager looked away, and my girlfriend had her phone in front of her face. So Mr. Clueless gets this look of, how dare you thwart my righteous revenge? You will all pay someday, and storms off. Me. You realize he'll be back here next week. Manager. Next week? He'll be back here tomorrow night. You folks have a nice night. Epilogue. Thanks to Mr. Buzzkill, the girlfriend and I decided to postpone the fun times. Instead, we're going to head back to competitor store tomorrow night to see if Mr. Clueless is there so we can torment him some more. <laughs> I know, we probably shouldn't, but it's the girlfriend's idea, not mine. This is beautiful. And our third story. I'm not who you think I am. I'm the boss. So this isn't my story. It's my grandfather's story from the 1970s. My granddad had grown up in a very working-class farming family, but as a teenager, he started working as a printing apprentice at a local factory. Over the decades, he scrimped and saved to buy shares in the business along with his future business partner. Eventually, he was a 50% shareholder, making him one of two CEOs, but he was the more involved partner day-to-day, -day, though I'm not 100% sure on specific details, as unfortunately, he's since developed dementia, so I can't ask him anything about it but what I know is anecdotal. The words aren't exact because I haven't heard this story since I was a little girl, around a decade and a half ago, but I do remember the spirit of the story and bits enough to cobble it together. Because of his background, he was a very hands-on boss. And this is where our story begins. So it was morning, before the workers arrived, and he was sweeping the hallway. As I said, very hands-on. When a man in, I think, a pinstripe suit walked in, We'll call him Entitled Jerk, or EJ, and my granddad will just be GD. EJ, you, I have a very important meeting with Mr. GD. Put that brush down and take me to him at once. GD, feigning ignorance. Oh, really? Well, I think Mr. GD's a bit busy right now. Motioning to the broom. I should note that my granddad had a wicked sense of humor. He was incredibly talented at winding people up, especially people who were rude to him. EG. Well, he won't be too busy to see me. We have a very important contract. It's a lie. It was a very small printing job of leaflets or posters. I shall be speaking to him about your attitude. You should treat people with respect. GD. All right, then. Let's go together. I'm sure he'll understand my side. So Granddad took EJ to Mr. GD's office and knocked at the door, entered and sat down, and removed his cap and the protective wear he wore over his shirt to keep it clean. Morning. I'm Mr. GD. The rest of the conversation was essentially my granddad dressing the man down sternly and eventually canceling not just the contract, but all future business with the company. My grandfather did not tolerate rudeness and due to his upbringing was especially touchy about people who believed they were a higher class talking down to his workers or any other working class people for that matter. The man left red, flustered, and got into his dirty blue van and drove off quickly. My granddad never saw him again, but I still remember him with tears of laughter in his eyes telling the story to a six or seven year old me and my little sister around the kitchen table. Oh, your granddad was fierce. And our next story. When I try to get dog food, a lady harasses me. Cast, me, Karen, M is employee, manager. Okay, first off, I'm 24. I just qualified to be a paramedic. I'm British, so our paramedic uniform is green. And what color is the pets at home uniform? All right, now you see where this is going. I just finished my 12-hour night shift and was exhausted. 
But I have a dog. His name's Benny. Don't worry, this information is relevant. I stopped off at Pets at Home to collect some food for Benny. He likes the liquidy one with the meaty chunks. As I'm looking through the aisles, trying to find the food Benny usually has, I hear an ahem. I didn't think anything of it, as I was surrounded by people, but then I hear it again. Ahem. Again, I don't do anything. But little did I know that was the wrong thing to do. That's when I feel a powerful pull on my jacket, and I see her. A wild carrot. Finally, she said exasperatedly. Me. Can I help you? She looked at me, disgusted. Carrot. Yes. I've been looking for, insert cat food brand here, for ages. Where is it? Of course, I didn't know as I had a dog, not a cat. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I don't know. Hmm, typical. You just don't want to help me. You're so lazy. Me. Ma'am, I don't work here. And please don't call me that. I'll call you whatever the freak I want. Now, get off your lazy butt and get it. Now, I wasn't ready for this, and the sudden outburst shocked me. Me. Ma'am, I can assure you I don't work here, and there's no need to shout. An employee comes over and tries to make sense of the situation. M, is there a problem? Karen, yes, there's a freaking problem. This lazy good-for-nothing, insert curse word here, is not helping me. I want this brat fired. Get me the manager. M quickly hurries to get a manager, and within a few minutes, M returns with a manager. Is there a problem? Karen, yes, this good-for-nothing worker won't help me. Karen has a victorious grin on her face. Ma'am, he doesn't work here. If you look at his uniform, you'll see that he's wearing a paramedic uniform. Karen changed a strange shade of white and just left. The manager apologized for the inconvenience and gave me 20% off, even though I didn't mind, but I accepted it gratefully, and I haven't seen her since. Thanks to everyone who watched this video until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.